Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Wireless Power Transfer Circuit Theory Limitations of the Classical Design. Now a wireless power transfer system consists of two antennas, one of the transmitter connected to the driver here, and then there is a receiving antenna connected to a receiver which has a rectifier, some other electronics in it, in it in order to extract the power from the antenna. Now the transfer of energy from the transmitter to the receiver is based on a inductive or magnetic transfer and that is that the transmitter is generating a magnetic flux which is then penetrating through the receiving antenna and in therefore generating a voltage here uh, which actually transfers the power to the receiver. Now unfortunately part of this flux is actually not common to the two and it's sort of uh, closed here around the transmitter so therefore not all the flux is actually uh, moved to the receiver. And in order to quantify it we have this coupling coefficient term such that k times the total flux is the common or the flux which is common to both the transmitter and receiver while 1 minus k flux or total flux is the part which is not common and is a stray flux here around the transmitter itself. Now the way to analyze the circuit like this, the classical way, it's a textbook approach will be by mutual inductance. We have two inductors, these are the antennas, and in order to optimize the circuit, we'll see it later, we put a capacitor, primary and secondary, and then we have, unfortunately, the parasitic resistances of the wire of the uh, antennas and the interconnection, and then obviously we have this mutual inductance, which is equal to k times the square root of the product of these inductances. Now in order to simplify the uh, presentation here and the, the expressions, I'm assuming that these are, are equal. This is not losing any generality, this is just simplifying the discussion. Now RL actually represents the load. Now loads are not resistors, usually. Uh, they are active circuit like with a rectifier and then a charger or a con or switch mode converter but it is uh, customary to replace the actual non-linear uh, load by a, an equivalent so-called RAC load which represents the power consumption co the power consumption of the load so this is why I'm going to use this R sub L as representing the load. Now the method for analyzing circuit like this can be based on actually separating the two coupled pairs and then introducing a dependent, dependent voltage sources defined by J omega M I2 which is the current the secondary and J omega M I1 uh, of the primary. These inductors are no more coupled. This vo these uh, voltage sources or dependent voltage sources are actually taking care of the original coupling here. So the current in the secondary is the voltage divided by the total resistance, okay? The total resistance here, or I should say total impedance here, Z sub S which is equal to the sum of these components and therefore the voltage source at the secondary which is J omega M times I2 and I2 is this value and since we have products of two J's and there is a minus here this becomes resistive this part and um, then divided by Z sub S and I1. So this voltage source actually is this value here. So we can call this as the impedance, the value, the uh, units are really 
ohms because this is ohm squared divided by ohm and this will be the, sort of the reflected impedance to the primary and the voltage source is this reflected resistance times I1 so in fact the voltage source can be as shown here can be replaced by an impedance uh, Z sub R which is equal to this value here uh, it's shown here omega k here I have the two inductances divided by this uh, this sub s and this is the value here this is the total impedance here now obviously in order to get the maximum current at the primary uh, you would like this r to be as small as possible and this can be done by running the system at resonance such that z sub s uh, in this sub s these two components will cancel each other the impedances if it is at resonance and you'll be left just be with the resistive component so this is actually what is done the components let's go back for a second of uh, these two reactive elements l sub s c sub s and these two are chosen such that they are equal to the excitation frequency or the excitation frequency is adjusted to that and therefore um, we have now a resistive cir circuit uh, none of the reactive elements is shown anymore we have just the parasitic resistor uh, they reflected this is now a resistance r l prime is the sum of these two and the same thing goes for the secondary we have this uh, positive resistance and the actual uh, RAC or the resistor which represents the load now the power that will be delivered to the load is I2 I sub 2 squared times the load okay now I2 squared is of course the voltage divided by the total impedance and this voltage is a function of the current at the primary so we end up with this expression I1 squared times this expression and then I have to correct it for the fact that I've actually calculated the power for the total branch and to get just this portion here I have to multiply it by this uh, ratio let's not worry about this because at high uh, efficiency this is approaching one so let's talk about this part here now what we see here is very interesting that we see that this resistor here this reflected resistor actually represent the power consumption of the system because we see that I square I1 square times this one is indeed the power that is delivered to the load so this actually simplifies matter because then we can just look at the primary here and optimize the circuit in terms of this reflected value in terms of the efficiency and the power transfer so this is what we are going to do now we then have the problem that we have a source we have a parasitic resistance and we have this reflected resistance so for high efficiency we would like to have this term much larger than this parasitic resistance that is shown here this one we'd like to have it much much larger than this one and the same thing goes for the secondary we like uh, this resistor to be uh, larger than this parasitic resistance now there is not much we can do here because this is once we choose RL that's it so here is where we can concentrate and, and understand what's going on and maybe optimize the system uh, by looking at the primary so from here we find that RL prime has to be much smaller than this value this all this is known this is the operating conditions and this is also the parasitic resistance now how small should it be it really depends on the efficiency that uh, we are looking for uh, and the efficiency is the ratio I mean this is the primary efficiency of the primary 
it is the, this resistance divided by the resistance plus the parasitic resistance and therefore uh, this we can sort of quantize this, this relationship and say that given a certain efficiency we would like this value to be about this value well this is the efficiency divided by 1 minus efficiency times the parasitic resistance or this uh, is now expressed as RL prime has to be for this target efficiency has to be about this value all of these are known this is the running frequency mutual inductance parasitic resistance and the target efficiency so let's have a look now at some real numbers here let's assume that we are running the system at 150 kilohertz uh, these two Im inductances are 20 micro henry positive resistances are 100 milliohm 0.1 ohm and let's do the calculation for a coupling coefficient of 0.5 now first thing I'm calculating omega m which turns out this is the 2 pi 1.5 10 to the fifth this is the one frequency and this is the inductance this is k and it comes up to be 10 ohm square it's 100 ohm square so we want to keep this relationship and taking a 90 percent efficiency as a target then uh, we find that this should be around 10 times the resistance the parasitic resistance and I find that the RL prime that is the total resistance here should be around 100 this is for k.5 for 0.8 it comes up to be 250 it's a different number now what about the power that we can transfer now power is as we have said approximately V in divided square divided by this resistance well if you like to have it more accurate you have to multiply it by the efficiency uh, actually taking into account the losses here in our case it turns out to be V in over 1 times the efficiency so say 1 volt will sort of will be a little bit less than one watt for one volt excitation from here we find that the power is proportional to RL because the larger the RL the smaller will be this value and the larger will be P out so we can sort of put RL here uh, to the nominator and see that the larger the power the larger is RL the larger the power but what about losses now we know that the smaller is this value the larger will be the losses or we would like this value to be large and therefore the losses are sort of one over this value and again the losses seem to be proportional to RL so here's the problem we are locked here if we increase RL we increase the power but the loss is increased so the efficiency will go down and vice versa so there is a fine area here or it's an area that can work with fairly high power and fairly high efficiency and if you move from it uh, you are in a problem then there is a question of the quality factor now quality factor of this circuit with the inductor and capacitor is the this is a series resonant network it'll be the omega l over r i'm neglecting the parasitic resistance and since this is omega l this is also omega l i, I end up with this and in this particular case we are now looking at this numerical situation we find that the Q is around 10 this is fairly high this means that small deviation in the excitation frequency or the tuning will move us 
from the optimum point. So this is another issue that one has to uh, take into account. So let's have a look now at some of the simulation of this circuit for this particular parameters that I've um, taken as an example. So here we have the inductances, uh, the, this capacitor we're chosen to match it to a 150 kilohertz, this is the running frequency here, and here are, is R as the parameter, the losses at 100 milliohm here and 100 milliohms here. So for K.5, this is the uh, value we've chosen, uh, we know that the sort of optimum value is 100 ohm. We see the indeed the efficiency is as we expected or we uh, targeted, it's about 0.9. And the power, as we have actually predicted, is approaching 1 watt. So this is really very consistent with what we have said. Now what happens if we are moving from this optimal point? So here is the case that I've uh, run it for 100 ohm, this is the nominal value, and then 1k. So let's look at here first, the 1k brings up a much higher power. This is 2.5 watts as compared to 1 watt, but see the, the efficiency very bad, it's 0.5. So we see that increasing the resistor is indeed increasing the power as we expected, but also increasing the losses, so therefore the efficiency went down quite a bit. Now I've also added a resistor of 10 ohms. Now the efficiency is very good, very excellent, almost 100%, but the power that we can get is very low. Here it is, and I have here this expanded scale here. So this is for 10 ohm the efficiency. This is the 100 ohm, which is 0.9. This is almost 100 percent. But the power we can get is very very low as compared to the only few uh, milliwatts, 10, 100 milliwatts perhaps, as compared to what we have actually lower than that as compared to what we have here. So we see that indeed the system is very, very sensitive to uh, the value of the uh, resistor given the operating point, the frequency, the inductances, and of course, most important is the coupling coefficient. This is taking into account the coupling coefficient. And now what happens if the coupling coefficient is changing? So I'm keeping now the resistor to be 100 ohms and changing the coupling coefficient 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8. Now the nominal value for which we have chosen 100 ohm was 0.5. Okay. So what we see here is again a variation. For 0.4, which is close to 0.5, we see pretty good efficiency. Pretty good efficiency. This is this is 0.8, say. And the power is not so bad, it's also about 1 watt, this is the 0.4. Now what happens with the 0.8? This is actually very good coupling, uh, much better. But uh, again, since it is not optimized, we have indeed a, a higher efficiency, the 0.8, it's a higher efficiency, almost 100%, but power level is very low. And for the point 0.2, we have a lower efficiency, but higher power. So we have much higher power, but lower efficiency. So again, we see that uh, once you move from this uh, optimal point, you get into trouble. So what can be done? One way to go, as people have shown in a number of papers, is to do impedance matching. This could be done by a passive network such that the impedance that the system will see will be changed to the optimal one or by a active like switchboard converter which can also reflect a resistance which is different from the actual resistance. So what are the conclusions here? We see that there is a very large load dependence here and one has to bear in 
mind that normal loads in practice are not resistors. There are, say, constant power loads, and then the actual resistance is the power divided by I square. Or they are battery charging, and th in this case, the resistance is something like the voltage of the battery divided by the current times some constant. So we don't deal with resistors as loads. Uh, we deal with active circuitry, which has a variable uh, reflected load. So there might be a need in order to optimize the system for an impedance matching between the actual load you have and the optimum load uh, for the system, especially if indeed you are under changes of uh, the coupling coefficient, that is the distance. So the distance is really a major uh, player here and the larger the distance the more complicated becomes the situation and you'd expect a lower power transfer and lower efficiency. And then there's the issue of the high Q, which means that um, a deviation of frequency and components uh, might actually move you from the optimal point. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future.